You have caught every single Pokemon in the world! Yes! In the world! Gimme, gimme! Here you go! You're the best. What? Is that all I got for finishing your career, Professor Oak? What the heck, Professor Oak? I did so much work and I went through so much suffering. And you don't even know if I'm a boy or a girl or not, and your grandson is named. Hello YouTube, this is Chris Maniac, bringing you a very special Pokemon X and Y Wi-Fi battle today. This match is an OU match versus Miyako, or, oh my goodness, I probably destroyed the Japanese uh, pronunciation of that because she is Japanese. Um, okay, let's say Japanese style. Miyako. <laughs> oh boy, okay. So, um, Miyako is my um, pupil. Like, I've um, got her into the competitive Pokemon scene. She used to be a casual Pokemon player, but now she is playing Pokemon competitively, and this is our first real battle together. And she's gonna show me how much she's learned. And she actually does really good. And she has a pretty standard OU team right here. It looks like a very solid team. And looking at my team, my team is a team which utilizes Meow Sticks dual screens, and then I could bring in my Togekiss or my Caesar and set up and sweep. So that is basically my plan right here. So, um, yeah, this is basically Pupil, which is Mia, Mia, I'll call her that from now on, versus Professor, which is me, the Pokemon Professor Chris. Okay, so I'll lead off with my Hydreigon because I know she's gonna lead off with her Rotom. Now, I predict her Volt Switch because I know she doesn't want to take a Draco Meteor with her Rotom. And I predict her Mawile to come in to try to be immune to the Draco Meteor. And, uh, yeah, I don't Draco Meteor though. I go for that big Fire Blast and I incinerate that. Mawile, absolutely destroying her only Mega Pokemon in, the, in her team, and down goes Yuki. That's her like um, favorite Pokemon. That's like her star of the show. So that was kind of demoralizing for uh, my my student. But there's no mercy because I am fighting as hard as I can because I want to see how good she is, um, how good she has gotten since I have um, got her to go into the competitive Pokemon scene. And anyway, so Talon Flame just opposes my um, Hydreigon right off the bat, and I'm thinking that this Talon Flame is a uh, is what's it called? Um, choice banded because it if it wasn't choice banded I would have survived that with like a little bit of health but I didn't so um yeah that thing's choice banded that's good to know but I lost my hydreigon in the process anyways I go on foul play and in comes sashimi her physical wall of a gliscor and I bring in Tsushima my um tentacruel and right here protect her toxic because I was predict I, I was predicting her um her gliscor to toxic my mandibuzz because why would you bring in um, why would you stay in a uh, mandibuzz with a gliscor Anyways, um, she switches out right there, scared of my scald, and I get out of here too, and I bring in Angela, my Tojakiss, and I predicted her Gudra as well to come in. And she is threatening out my fairy move, but I have no fairy moves in this Tojakiss. I only have Aura Sphere and Air Slash, Roost, and Nasty Plot. So I Nasty Plot on her switch, but it comes to Rotom, and that, this is her biggest threat to my team, because I have three Pokemon that are weak to um, Electric, and my only Pokemon that resists Electric is gone from this match, which is my Hydreigon. She goes for a switch right here, and this bold Rotom probably that doesn't like it doesn't do much to me because it doesn't have that much special attack investment or none at all. Anyway, she predicts my Aura Sphere, which is really nice, or maybe she was lucky, I don't know. Maybe she was predicting a uh, fairy move too, because the fire resists fairy move also, so that was a great decision for her. Now she just got yeah, Brave Bird off of anything. And this Brave Bird does really little damage to my Mandibuzz because my Mandibuzz is bulky. All Mandibuzz is bulky, especially. And I have max defense investment and HP investment on this Mandibuzz. So this Mandibuzz is gonna be here for a while. Anyways, it comes her Conkleder. And by the way, um, all her Pokemon, well most of them anyways, they're Pokemon that were like leftovers from my breeding. So basically, I've hatched most of her Pokemon except for Gudra. So I am basically fighting my own hatched Pokemon right now, which is pretty interesting. Anyways, in comes Percival, my um, Meowstic, and Meowstic is one of my favorite Pokemon this new gen because um, it's just really um, scary and like creepy, and uh, I like scary and creepy Pokemon, and I like Psychic types too. So combining those two would really um, make me like adore a Psychic Pokemon. Anyways, I go for a Psychic right here on her Conkleder. Doesn't really do much because obviously this thing has a Salt Vest, and behind like um, 
Let me max the defensive estimate and behind the reflect. I could take two paybacks, but I took a lot of damage right there. Anyways, I'm, I'm predicting her to go for the max punch right here. And um, yeah, she does go for that. And that is great for me because now I can just get off a roost on her switch because she's threatened out by both of my stab moves. And out comes Sashimi um, once again. Her Gliss score. I go for the roost right here. And I still have a healthy Tojikis. And the Tojikis um, really um, is a big threat to her team too because I just glitched her whole team down. But I really need to watch out for that Rotom because that Rotom could just keep on both switching my team. And there is an air slash that um, that was score and I flinch it, which is awesome. I really need to break her team down because her team is full of walls. Gudra, Gliss score, um, Rotom. <laughs> like I, it's hard to break through those. And um, Conkle too. So she has a lot of bulky Pokemon on her team. Anyway, she toxics my um, Kojukis. That kind of hurts, but doesn't really matter. I could just I could just switch out and roost up if it gets too hairy for me. But still, uh, this puts offensive pressure on me, um, and I can't really set up with Tojikas anymore, because if I set up, then I am obliged to stay in, and um, therefore get um, out full toxic. Anyways, in comes Kiriko, her washing machine, World Tom, and I do very little damage to that thing with Air Slash, so I switch, I switch out of there, I don't want to take a Volt Switch. And then comes Percival, I just, I just stack this cat off. Because, uh, yeah, I can't really, um, I, I can't afford to take a Volt Switch from anything. I mean, from this, um, Rotom and sack off my, my other Pokemon. Because I don't want my other Pokemon receiving damage from a Volt Switch from a Rotom. Anyways, it comes Sashimi, um, her list score, and, um, the next Pokemon that I bring is Tsushima, my, uh, Tentacruel. And right here, I'm predicting, I'm, I'm hoping I could survive an Earthquake, and I would survive an Earthquake if she didn't get a crit. Thankfully, I still survived with a crit, but that crit really mattered because I would have been able to survive with half health. But now I'm only at 5, five HP, and uh, the Rotom could come in and just revenge kill me. Revenge KO me. I could have survived, but instead of the Rotom coming in, in comes the Conkluder, and she's obviously gonna go for a Mac Punch so that I can't really get any damage off on her. And I bring in Angela just to resist that Mac Punch, and she goes for a Stone Edge, and I'm like, damn, damn it! Um, she predicted me, and she is no normal Valor, she's no noob anymore. She has some skill, she can predict, she's not like a, um, a NPC or a robot who fights based on weaknesses of Pokemon. She could actually predict um, what I am thinking. So this really surprised me and I was really proud of Mia at that point. I am proud of you Mia if you're watching this um, as, a, as a professor, as the, the person who brought you into competitive battling. And um, But I am under pressure right now because a lot of damage was dealt to my um, Tojikis. And I had to stack off my tentacle to another Volt Switch of this Rotom. This Rotom is just picking off my Pokemon slowly this entire match because it can just Volt Switch in and out and I can't really deal much damage to it. And I can't bring on my Caesar because it would just, um, like, little bust me. And it assumes Talon Flame and I can just resist its move. Well, not really resist, but take a move with my Mandibuzz because Mandibuzz could take any physical hits, hard body baby. And I do, it takes like. Um, 40% to, with that Flare Blitz, that does a lot actually. I could have roosted right here, I just stalled her out with um, Endless Roost, but now I'm left with less HP than I would have been at full health. And this Rotom, once again, could just come in and bolt with me, but thankfully, she doesn't take me out right away, she just goes to a Thunder Wave. And that is great, I could get preliminary damage off on this Rotom before going down to a Volt Switch. So, I go for the um, Bob Play, and that does like um, a pretty good dam amount of damage to her. And uh, a little bit of damage is really helpful because um, that Rotom I really need to take it down because my whole team is kind of weak to it. And I go for a foul play, there's a lot of damage to Gudra surprisingly. And I'm hoping to survive this Thunderbolt and I do! Uh, my Belladonna, my beautiful lady hangs on but she's paralyzed and that sucks! Because now I can't get off another bit of damage on this Gudra and I can't knock it out with my next Pokemon. Well, I was thinking I wasn't able to knock it out with my Caesar. But, uh, uh, thankfully, I do knock it out later on, but, um, I am scared of her flamethrower right here, so, uh, I was scouting off her flamethrower if she had it, but she, has, she actually has Fire Blast, and that would absolutely incinerate my Caesar. Uh, so I bring in Angela, and it is a great thing I brought in Angela, because if I did, if I stayed with my Caesar, I didn't, I, my Caesar would have been destroyed, annihilated, incinerated by that Fire Blast. And then it just comes this annoying Rotom once again, I can't really do much versus this thing. And this gives me a chance to roost though, because uh, with roost you lose your fly type typing and any sort of electric or ice type move would be neutral against you because you lose your ice type typing. I mean, your flying typing, whoops. Anyways, um, she goes for the Volt Switch once again, and I survive with my Telegicus. So my Telegicus is hanging on 
of Angela is being such an angel right now because she's hanging on despite the super effective damage that's being dealt to it, every move that's being thrown at it. But um, she heroically goes down to poison and down goes Angela. And Angela is one of my MVPs of this match, no doubt. Anyways, it was my last hope for winning this battle. It's a good thing that Angela got preliminary damage off of Nagujo because without that preliminary damage, I would have been able to not knock out this Gujo with a bullet punch. And I was really hoping this bullet punch would take it down too. And thankfully it does bring Mochi down. Or mo Mochi. I think that's like some sort of Japanese um, uh, dessert or something. Like a rice filled bowl. I mean a rice filled... Actually I'm not sure what I'm talking about. <laughs> Anyways, it comes to Rotom and it will us me. And um, this kind of sucks but then again I can Swords Dance up, get up the plus 6 Roost up. And that's basically my last hope of winning this game because um, I need to, I need to win this game with, against my students because how embarrassing would it be for your students to be, defeat you in the first battle? Anyways, um, I go for Swords Dance once again. I know her, I know her controller can't really knock me out in one shot, and I can just keep on Swords Dancing up and roosting until I'm, until I'm at full health and then bullet punching her entire team down. So this burn isn't really doing much to me. I mean, it's doing like uh, damage um, slowly. And it kind of cuts my attack in half, but still, I have lots of attack now because I'm a plus six. Anyway, she goes for a mag punch right here, hoping to knock me out with a crit or something, but that's not even close to knocking me out. I go for the roost, and this it looks like I'm gonna win. It looks like um, I have this, this game in the bag because I can just keep roosting up and then bullet punch this punk holder down. So I am roosting up right here, just chilling, and um, Mia is like, like really scared right now in her own words because um, she can't think of a way to knock out my. Um, Caesar, but um, this drain punch, even with a crit, does like only 30% to me, and this is great. I can just keep on um, um, like roosting up. But right here, I didn't go for the roost. I go for the bullet punch, and with a second, um, and with a second drain punch, she could take me out. So I sh she goes for the bullet punch. I mean, for the drain punch right here, and um, this kind of sucks. I could have went for the roost again and taken out the damage from a crit, and I would have been able to defeat this. Um, Conqueror, but now she switches out. In comes her Rotom, and I didn't roost up right here. And uh, I, if I roosted up, I would have won the battle, but I didn't. I just bullet punched, trying to take down the Conqueror. But um, yeah, she wins now with a 2 0 in her favor against her professor who got her into competitive battling. So that was a great game, Miyako. That was so close. But um, yeah, you win. That was really cool. And um, you actually did really well, despite um, you only being in competitive battling for like, what, a month now? <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Well, yeah, folks, I hope you enjoyed this OU battle. Leave a like, comment, subscribe if you did. And I'll see you folks next time.